Uh, this is Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango returning. Hello YouTube, I'm Ben, I'm Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango and I'm here with part five, the last major part of the build on the Idiot's Guide to Building an All-Star Node and today we're going to be amending the BF888 and wiring it into the SAM card and doing our initial test to see whether it works. Don't forget throughout this whole series I'm running a competition so if you want to win an All-Star Node or all of the things that you need to build your own then do have a look at the competition at the end of this video. Right, let's get to work. Great, so the first job that we have to do is unbox our BF888S. And there's only three things that we're actually going to need from this box. We're going to need the radio itself, a battery just for the initial turn on and to program it and an antenna. The rest of the bits in this box I usually put on eBay just to recoup a couple of pounds of the cost because we really don't need them for this. So sliding the battery in and uh, for some reason this one was decidedly difficult to slide in. <laughs> but anyway, got the thing in eventually and then uh, attach the antenna, screwing it onto the top and then just make sure it's working about right. Turn it on, flick through the channels, make sure it's talking to you and uh, it seems to be working. So that's fine. Uh, then what we need to do is remove this bit of rubber in the corner to expose these two ports. Then we're going to plug in our cable. So this is a, a cable. There is a chip in here that makes it driverless so you don't need a driver disc and you just simply plug that into the side and then plug the USB into the computer. Now on the computer you're going to have to go onto Google, type in the word chirp to do a search for chirp and the top answer is the website for chirp and chirp is a uh, great free bit of software that enables you to program various different UHF VHF radios. You just need to download it and then once it's downloaded uh, you need to install it. I'm obviously installing the Windows version here. If you're using a Mac you'll need to try a Mac version. So it's only a small program but once it's installed you're greeted with uh, a screen that looks a little bit plain to start with that makes you sort of disconcertingly think that you might have done something wrong but it is just a plain screen and then what you need to do is download from the radio all of the uh, information so choose Baofeng from the brand and then go down to BF888 there and make sure you've got the right COM port otherwise it won't download it and then it's going to download everything from the radio so that's all of the preset channels from the radio then going on to the RSGB's website to find the band plan for 70 SEMS. Once I've found a frequency that I'm allowed to use, I simply copy and paste that frequency to every single channel and also set up a tone so that the squelch will only come off if it's from my radio, a tone of 115. And I simply copy and paste that information to every single channel. Also, I've changed it to low transmit power because we don't need much power for this because obviously it's just for in our house. Then you need to disable all of the other audio notifications from the radio, things like low power or high power or uh, stuff like that and battery saving mode. That all needs disabled so that it doesn't ever make any noises. Likewise, the Roger beep needs turning off and we may as well turn the FM mode off because we're not going to listen to uh, Radio 1 on this particular radio. Once we've done all those settings we then need to upload those settings back to the BF888 and because I put the same settings on every single channel it then doesn't matter what channel the radio is on because every single channel is the same and it's the settings that we uh, need for this. Next up I need my UV5R which is the radio that I'm going to use to uh, use my node and I need to put in the same frequency that I've just programmed. I've chosen 434.100 and then put in the tones. There's two different sorts of tones. I use the DCS tones on both receive and transmit and they need to be on 115N. So once I've selected that for both the transmit and the receive it's a good idea to program those settings into your ba into your uh, Baofeng UV5R. Programming can be a little bit weird because you actually have to program it twice, once for transmit and once for receive. Uh, so that just takes a little bit more thinking. So find the memory channels, find a free channel. I know that my uh, lowest free channel is number 41. So going up to 41 and then I need to 
input both the transmit and the receive memory just simply by saying write to memory twice. And then once that's done, we should be able to test it. So going to channel 41 on my UV5R and turning on my Baofeng 888, hopefully if I transmit on one, I shall receive on the other and vice versa. And one of the good ways of testing if it's working is make sure you can get feedback both ways. So by putting them face to face, yep, all is well. So they are opening the squelch, transmitting and receiving. So I know that those radios are working. Now with the 888, what we need to do is unscrew the antenna. We will need that later. So hold on to it, pull off these two knobs. They just pull off with a bit of force and then also remove the battery. We don't actually need the battery now. So I add that back to the box and put it on eBay. Then there's three washers on the top of the radio and they're quite fiddly to get out but uh, using a sharp spike or something you can sort of spin them around a few times just to release them and they just twist off and then come out and you need to take all three of those off. Here's the last one coming out now, give it a shake, job done. And then we need a uh, two different screwdrivers so we need a Torx T10 screwdriver uh, that's the star-shaped screwdrivers to undo those two screws. Keep hold of those. We'll need both of those in just a moment. And then a normal screwdriver just to undo uh, these two screws here. We won't actually be using them, so uh, you can dispose of them or use them for something else. This bit of plastic just comes off. And then if all is well, this whole section will then just carefully pull out and we can dispose of the plastic uh, backing. We don't need the speaker on anymore so do snip that wire off. We'll de-solder that uh, in just a moment but we don't need that so that can go in the bin. And then remove these five screws. Uh, there's one that's hidden. There's sort of three around the edge and then there's one that's hidden right in the middle of the radio which is the one that I often use. All of the other little bits of plastic that keep coming off. We don't need those. We can just dispose of those. But anyway, once you've got rid of all of the screws including that sneaky one in the middle you'll think that the whole thing should, the PCB should just come away from the heatsink but it doesn't because there's one bit that's soldered on so you just need to heat that up and lift the PCB off the heatsink. We'll need the heatsink so don't get rid of it. Then what we're going to do is remove this last inductor coil. Very easy to desolder because of course it inducts heat as well as electricity. So that just comes straight off. And then a little bit more tricky we need to um, remove this transistor here, the final transistor. This is just to reduce the power. It's far easier to do with a heat gun but it can be done with a soldering iron. And then also the, the little capacitor I think it is that's right next to that transistor needs to come off. And then you need about one centimetre of 30 gauge wire well tinned at the ends and they're going to bridge from the very edges of the last two capacitors there across to the first section of the induction coil where that's just desoldered. This can be quite a fiddly solder because obviously it's quite small uh, but uh, hopefully you can see where that's going. It, it doesn't matter if it touches both of those capacitors because they are joined anyway and then just about there the other side of that wire needs to go on and once that is soldered in place we're done on that side. One last bit of 30 gauge wire it just needs to go to the pin on the bottom left of this little chip here and uh, in a moment we will connect that up to the COS, the COS wire, that's where we're going to get that from. Okay with those amendments done this can now go back onto the heatsink. Uh, of course to get it on we will need to remelt that solder to allow that pin to come through and then once that's through and, and soldered back in then we need to do up the screws again so that each of the screws are in place and the uh, heat from the radio will be dissipated again by the heat sink. So those five screws nice and tight so that the heat goes through the screws into the heat sink and then dissipates and uh, don't forget the sneaky one that comes right in the middle. And once all of those screws are back in place then we're ready to start attaching wires and resistors back onto the radio and to connect them to our sound fob. So 
let's get rid of the speaker wires there in the way we can also snap off the led from the top we don't need that the way i usually do this is just wobble it it work hardens and then the wires snap just make sure the stubs aren't touching each other but that can come off and then likewise just twist the microphone we don't want the microphone on there just a light twist snaps the wires behind it again make sure there's no wires left on there touching but that can come off. And then we need two 10K resistors. And it's a good idea to cut these very short, a bit of flux on there, tin the ends, and they are going on two different ports, which uh, uh, hopefully a picture, a close-up picture will be able to show you exactly where they're going. Uh, the one at the top goes on the far right hand of the three little um, solder pads at the top there. So that's two 10k resistors in place. And then uh, we're going to just have an earth wire and that goes a very short wire just going uh, off the side. So this is the negative to the battery. Uh, the positive is the purple wire that's already in our box. This is the negative short wire just comes off the very edge of the PCB there and will go onto the Raspberry Pi. Okay, back in our project box. Firstly, Take the one of the Torx screws from the radio. Oh, I'm just sticking the um, some double double sided tape just to stick that butt converter down so it doesn't go anywhere. And then using the Torx screw, I'm going to uh, use that very screw just because it fits. It's the right size to hold the Raspberry Pi down. Just tightly doing it in one corner seems to hold it perfectly adequately. Obviously, this box isn't going to be shaking around much, so that's fine. And then that purple wire solders on to that port that we had to desolder and resolder. That's the power. And then the other torque screw is going in the other corner on the radio itself so that that is also held in place. And I've just used a bit of insulation tape over the diodes that are in the way. This is the negative wire going from the Baofang onto the top of the Raspberry Pi. It's quite hard to solder on because obviously a USB port wasn't really made to receive solder. So you need quite a lot of heat to get it to adhere. But once that's soldered on, that's done. Then each of these four wires is going somewhere. So the white one is the COS. That's going to attach to the 30 gauge wire that goes onto the pin uh, underneath the radio that we just put on and obviously uh, tape insulation tape over that joint and uh, yeah get that uh, well insulated next one we're going to attach this black wire here which is the transmit onto the uh, 10k resistor that we've put in the middle there then the yellow wire is going that's the receive that's going on the 10k resistor right near the top of the radio and once that's soldered on Last, but by no means least, is this red wire, which is the push to talk. And that goes just underneath that other 10K resistor. Well, hopefully, that's now the radio programmed and lowered in power and connected to the CM108 sound card. So we're now in a position that we can start testing it. So what we're going to do now is attach the pigtail from the radio it's quite fiddly to get in because the box has been in the way really I should have done that before I put the radio in but anyway once you've got that in it then sort of curls around just like a pigtail round that bracket underneath the wires for the CM108 and into the 90 degree socket that we've already put on the back of the radio uh, well that's the pigtail in place and then get the rubber ducky antenna that you had from the radio itself and that just screws into that 90 degree socket and there we are ready for testing so apply a bit of power the 12 volts dc and then we'll turn uh, the, our radio on so that we can hear it uh, booting up for the first time and click the on switch now, as you will see, the radio, well, the lights start flashing first. So then turning the Baofeng on, I can boot up the power on my node. It will report off the IP address. That shows me that it's working, connected to the internet, and all is well so far. No blue smoke, so that's always a win. And then using Supermon, I'm going to connect it to the Parrot node. Four zero eight nine four is a great one to connect to the first time, just in case you're giving out any spurious transmissions. Let's try this. This is two echo zero Bravo Mike Tango doing a radio check for audio two e zero BMT. Playback. This is two echo zero Bravo Mike Tango doing a radio check for 
So a little bit quiet, but we can amend that in the settings in just a moment. But all so far seems to be working. Good news. Thank you so much for watching part five of my Idiot's Guide to Building an All-Star Node. If you like this video, please do click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see more of my videos. That really cheers me on as I build these things. Finally, don't forget to enter the competition right at the end of this video if you want to win either an All-Star Node or all of the things that you will need to build your own. I'm Ben, I'm 2 Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango, off and clear, 7-3. Uh, this is 2 Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango returning.